Are you urinating blood? And this is a common reason that patients often come to see their urologist. They want to figure out what's the cause of the blood in their urine. Hi friends, I'm Dr. Robert Chan, and in this episode, we are going to go over 11 of the most common reasons why someone has blood in their urine or hematuria. What the? Anytime people have blood coming out of one of their openings, whether it be their penis or their rectum, the first thing that they often think about is cancer. So let's address that first. What are the chances that peeing blood is a sign that you've got cancer? Now, if it's gross hematuria, where the blood can be seen by the naked eye, then the chances are about 23%, or about one in four. Now, if it's microscopic hematuria, where the blood can only be seen on urinalysis or lab tests, then the chances are a little bit lower, at about 5%, or about one in 20. So if it's not cancer, then what could it be? Now, I'm gonna work over this monomic to go over the 11 causes of blood in the urine. The monomic that I use to remember is PP on this. So let's get into it. Number one, period. If a woman is menstruating, sometimes the menstrual blood can actually contaminate the urine that's provided for a sample. So it looks like hematuria, but when in actually reality, it's just contamination. This is what we call pseudo hematuria or false hematuria. A lot of times it's associated with a cyclical nature based on the timing of the periods each month. Number two, prostate. Three things associated with prostate that can cause bleeding, prostatitis, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, and prostate cancer. So for prostatitis, this is an infection of the prostate, either bacterial or non-bacterial, that leads to inflammation of it. A lot of times people complain of difficulty urinating or maybe feeling some fullness down in their bicycle seat area. For benign prosthetic hyperplasia, the prostate just gets so big that sometimes it starts to bleed. And then finally for prostate cancer, there can be some abnormal vessels that form in the prostate that have a tendency to bleed. Number three, obstructive uropathy. This is where something blocks the outlet to your bladder and the urine ends up backing up in the bladder and distending it quite immensely. Now, the problem with this that leads to bleeding is that whenever we put a catheter in to decompress the bladder, the sudden decompression of it can lead to bleeding from the lining of the bladder. Now, usually this goes away after, after a day or two, but it can seem pretty scary at the time that it happens. Number five, trauma. Now, certain things like mixed martial arts or any type of combat sport where you have a chance of getting kicked in the kidneys, this can lead to hematuria or blood in the urine. Other instances might be if you get in a car accident and sustain some type of kidney trauma, or if you're just drinking a lot of beer and somebody comes up to you and kicks you really hard in your bladder. There's a possibility that your bladder could explode and start bleeding. Number six, tumors. Now this is the one that everybody fears about, and it's possible to develop tumors anywhere in the urinary tract, going up from the kidneys, in the ureters, down to the bladder, and even in the urethra. It's often associated with people who smoke or have a long-standing history of smoking, as well as some industrial chemical exposures. Now, the reason that these cancers bleed is that the vessels in these cancers tend to be abnormally formed. Number seven, tuberculosis. It's possible that people who have tuberculosis in their lungs can have tuberculosis in their urinary tract as well. It's very rare in developed countries, but for someone who's had long exposure in a developing nation, it should be in the back of your mind as a possibility. Number eight, thrombosis, also known as the blood clot. Whenever someone gets a blood clot in their renal vein, this can lead to bleeding. Now, once again, this is fairly rare, fortunately. Number nine, hematologic. Now what this means is 
anything that causes your blood to not clot as well. Certain things like drugs, Pradaxa, Coumadin, Eliquis, Heparin, Lovenox, all these things inhibit your blood from clotting and can lead to bleeding in the urine. Now there's also genetic disorders like hemophilia, which makes people prone to not clot as well. Number 10, infection. Now this is one of the most common causes of hematuria that can occur. It can be infection in the bladder, infection in the kidneys, infections anywhere in the urinary tract. But regardless, the infection and the bacteria causes the linings of the bladder to become a little bit more friable or more prone to bleed. Fortunately, by treating with antibiotics, the bleeding oftentimes goes away. Number 11, stones. Things such as kidney stones can often lead to pain as well as blood in the urine. Now, a lot of patients tell me that having a kidney stone is literally the worst pain of their life, even worse than giving birth to kids. So now that we've gone over the 11 causes of hematuria, let's go over what does the workup look like? What can you expect the urologist to tell you is gonna happen next when you go see them? So it involves three things. The first is something called a cystoscopy, which is a camera that goes up your urethra into your bladder and takes a good look around. Now, if anybody's ever had a colonoscopy, it's barely similar in detail, but a little bit less involved. Usually we can do these cystoscopies in the office. They don't require any type of sedation of any sort, um, and they're fairly quick. The next thing, number two, is a CT scan of your abdomen and pelvis. This gives us a way to look at everything in your abdomen and in your pelvis and all those organs. Primarily the ones that we're focusing on are your kidneys and your ureters and your bladder. Now, these things are also good for picking up non-cancer causes like kidney stones. Because it's a CT scan, there is some radiation involved and because we give some contrast in the veins, people who have iodine allergies sometimes need to take some prophylaxis for the CT scans. And then number three, urine cytology. This is where we take a sample of the urine and send it to the pathologist and they examine it underneath the microscope to see if there's any abnormal cancer cells floating around in the urine. So there's the workup, but you might be wondering what happens if the urologist does this workup and doesn't find anything? Well, congratulations, right? Not so fast. The chances that for microscopic hematuria, where they only pick it up on the urinalysis, 43% of the time, the urologist does not find any cause for why there is any bleeding. Fortunately, the chances that someone will go on to develop a cancer is fairly slim. It's only in about one to 3% of patients where they will eventually develop some form of urologic cancer. Now for gross hematuria or hematuria that you can see with your naked eye, the rates are a little bit higher. The chances that we don't find anything are about 8%. And ultimately, if we don't find anything of those people, about 18% of those people will go on to develop cancer. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was educational and kind of gives you a quick overview of what you can expect when you go and visit your urologist. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. Thanks.